Hey y'all, thanks for visiting the Genomi YouTube channel. I'm Genomi creator Florence DeLee, and I am going to give you some quick, easy, and cheap hacks to turn not so beautiful things you bought online into more beautiful things you bought online using just your Genomi sewing machine and your Genomi serger. I call this episode what it looked like online versus like what it looked like when it arrived, plus what we're gonna do with it. So like it evens out. Picture it. You're going to a costume party. Let's say you have three other good girlfriends and because you're the blonde, naturally you're gonna be Carrie Bradshaw. Why does everyone wanna be Carrie Bradshaw? Why is the show even about her? Carrie Bradshaw is the worst character in Sex in the City. But I'm not talking about Sarah Jessica Parker, whom I love, First Wives Club, and Hocus Pocus in the same year. Icon, but Carrie Bradshaw? I myself am more of a Samantha, but here we go. Woo! Okay, so like ding dong packages are here. You got your tutu skirt she wears, the, the shirt, and then a hat. She wears a hat. You're excited. We're opening things up. It's gonna look exactly like I thought. Sure, there were no review images, but I can trust the internet. Ah! Kidding, kidding. We're good. So we're opening it, we're pulling it out, and oh no, it's terrible. Throw it away, tell them you're sick, you can't go to the party. Okay, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Not the worst. Oh, okay. Esther does think it is the worst thing she has ever seen. But with a few household items that you have lying around, ostrich feathers, pre-cut tool, assorted thread colors, we can really make this work. I start off by ironing the skirt. I cannot tell you how many online shopping sins can be covered by a good iron. So many review images I see are just a wrinkled mess. Just iron it, use some vinegar. That always helps wrinkles get out. And if vinegar doesn't work, then use the shame of the fact that you bought it for so cheap. Get those wrinkles out. But look, it's like, uh, do some steam magic with the iron, which is definitely safe and it's already much better. Now one tool I cannot live without in my studio is a hem puffer. I have had it forever and it puffs chalk onto circle skirts and other things. Look, puff puff, it works. So you're just gonna get the shortest part of the skirt and kind of slowly rotate it around and puff along so you have a line to cut on. Glamorous, thumbs up. So you're gonna throw it on your table. So in this hypothetical party storyline, we're gonna hypothetically say my table does not look like it looks right now. But we are gonna lay our skirt right down on the table and follow that puff line you made to cut it out. Now don't throw those scraps away, there they are. You're gonna basically just cut kind of rough triangles out of them. We're gonna be making a flower for the hat. And since flowers are not symmetrical, they're natural, don't really worry about the measurements. Just kind of cut the chunks away as you see fit. Look, it's already better. We've really moved up in this world. Work, queen, yes. And now we're gonna learn about my two favorite serger tools, the little screwdriver and the thingamajiggy that catches the needle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the left needle out because we're making it a three thread handkerchief hem, which is going to allow our tool skirt to kick out a little bit without making it too heavy or having to put an actual hem in it. So it's quick and easy. So I'm just kind of doing the magic that these tools do. If you need any answers about these, the manual is honestly so clear, even I can figure it out. And these are our settings. R, tight, and another R. And once you've got that, three, three, four, five, is the magic tension number. And Esther would not be any of the four friends. If she was a character, she would be big. No explanation. So now you're just going to put your skirt at the hem right under your machine, and you're just gonna surge away. Don't pull too much. Don't give it too much tension. We don't wanna make kind of a lettuce leaf hem. What we're doing is we're just kind of adding a light bulk to the bottom of the tool skirt. Take this time to reflect about what Sex in the City character you would be. And if it was Carrie Bradshaw, feel free to turn this off right now. But if it was literally anyone else, we're solid. Now, if you saw my famous Emmy snubbed last video about making ruffles with the ruffle foot, you can go back and check it out because what I've done here is I've made a long ruffle and a short ruffle. The long ruffle being for the slip of this skirt. That's gonna allow us to give a little kick out to that tool and to kind of stop static electricity from sticking to it. 
Nothing too big. And honestly, you could add as many ruffles as you want or as little as you want. You could put a whole petticoat under this. You know, the world is your oyster if you like seafood. So I'm marking the hem up three and a half inches to how long the ruffle is. And I have thread up my machine in a delicate little pink and I'm ready to make. Hey, let's sew. There may be no better friend to have in a sticky situation than a Janome walking foot, which actually also comes with the machine. So these are the settings we're gonna do. It's a zigzag. I'll be honest, sometimes depending on my mood is what I set the zigzag as. Something that looks like it has a certain je ne sais quoi. And that is how you find the center of a waistband, everyone. And because I like to live life on the edge and play dangerous games, I actually don't pin my ruffles when I sew them. I think the pins kind of get in the way and God gave me two sturdy mitts to use as pins, which were probably famous last words for someone who has sewn their hand together. But alas, here we are and we're ready. So we're just gonna do a, you know, a saucy and a sultry little zigzag going around this skirt. Like I said, this ruffle is not gonna be an end-all be-all. It's more of a little kick pleat for the skirt. Insert Sex in the City quote. Oh, how gorgeous does that look? Now onto the scraps. I mean the foliage. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to zigzag some buttonhole thread onto the end of the tool so I can pull it and do more of a loose gather. However, any way you wanna do it is fine. If you wanna do a traditional gathering stitch, if you wanna get crazy with that ruffler you've really fallen in love with, then you do that. But at the end, you're gonna have kind of an old timey circus garland on your hands. And we're just gonna kind of tug and pull away until we slowly start to make this ethereal. Listen, I'm not gonna pretend like I patterned this flower. I let it speak to me naturally and you should do the same. Take everything with a grain of salt. I bet Carrie Bradshaw would. So now I'm gonna disassemble this hat. And when I tell you, look at this, the strongest glue job I have ever seen on something. I thought I was gonna throw hands with this fascinator, y'all. But, yeah, snailed it. So now what I've done is taken the other ruffle and just pinned it around the circumference of this fascinator at the top. I took the clip from the inside off so it wouldn't get caught on anything. And I'm just making the stitch a little wider to be easier to sew with. Don't be scared. Things like this look stiff, but are actually really easy to go through a sewing machine. You just got to kind of talk nice to it, take it out on a date, you know, uh, tell it his hair looks nice. As you saw, I went to the slow stitch on the machine to control it, and I did not a needle break. I promise you that, even though the sound is off. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the flower part. Pinned and gorgeous. So now that I have that sewn together, I'm gonna use my gay superpowers to kind of maneuver the petals in this hat to cover the center of the hat. What I'm doing basically is pinching the center of each petal pulling it up to the center like we're making a little runaway handkerchief or a pie. And I'm just slowly pinning it around one at a time to kind of see how it goes. If that's not what you're feeling, then you make a rose, you make a pansy, you do whatever your heart desires. But I mean like, that's good, you gotta admit. So follow me on this crazy next step. We are going to go to the right of the machine and turn our feed dog off so it doesn't move our fabric. And we're gonna go to a zigzag and make it as wide as you can. This is going to create a tack sort of stitch so it doesn't move our fabric, but it creates a strong tack. Now it says that foot, but listen to me, where we're going? Okay, it got weird, but we're back on track. So now you're gonna place a tack stitch wherever you put a pin. You're just gonna make sure that the pressure is down so you have tension, and you're just gonna slowly press on the foot so it goes left to right five or six times. A strong tack, and then you just cut it. Bam, it's sewn, it's beautiful. Take those pins out and shake, shake, shake it for good measure because it's just what you do. Now we could be done, or we could get real gay. Yeah, you guessed it. That ostrich is going on the hat. And at this point, your sewing machine has earned a day off or maybe a long weekend because you're going to tack this ostrich in two places like you did to that flower. Just nice and careful. It looks more dangerous in this image than it actually is, but it actually looks like I'm sewing Pepe the Shrimp from the Muppets, but you know, that's a look too. 
And because we'd hate for it to be too much, the hat is done. Yes, queen. Come on now. As the kid would say, lit. Okay, so last but not least is the shirt. We're gonna keep it simple because we got so much going on. I'm gonna use a color that kind of matches the ostrich and we're definitely gonna put the feed dog back on and we are gonna use the embroidery of this machine. I am a sucker for embroidery. I picked a bow because it's a bow, which always wins. And I just go on about a medium speed to make sure that everything is nice and nimble, especially since we're doing it on a jersey. We wanna make sure nothing is stretching or warping. But kind of going with the flow, the F foot that you use has that amazing red arrow, so you basically don't even have to think. You can just sit there and match the stitch line to that. And like, away you go. Seriously, no matter how old I get, embroidery is the most magical thing. And it really makes a house a home. So we're just gonna chug. Nothing is sexier in this city than the sound of the automatic thread cutter on the Janome. We're gonna embroider this shirt with bows on it. Now think about it. Are you a Charlotte? Are you Miranda? Are you a Samantha? I mean, you could be a Carrie, but you ain't coming to my house for dinner. Or are you Esther? Okay, I will take your shirt and I will raise you a bow up because I'm a homosexual. Oh, sad. It's in black and white sepia, but now it's fashion honey you better work where's she going i don't know but it's expensive nothing like a boa am i right the detail people will say where did you get this hokator garment and remember the Janome doesn't only do beautiful bows it also does lettering remember from florence de lee carrie bradshaw is truly the worst. And this was Sex in the City. No, it was the Janome channel. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Jazzy yeah, exit music, cause I think the theme song has a saxophone. Don't remember, and I probably wouldn't be able to play it if I did. Is that habit a bow? That might be Frasier.